Hi, welcome back to Test Sciences series of Reliability Growth Modeling Modules. In this module, we will go into detail about our first category of Reliability Growth Models, Poisson Process-Based Models. First, we will learn more about Poisson Process Models, specifically the homogeneous Poisson Process Model. So recall that in our last module, we learned about the exponential distribution with the PDF of the form lambda times e to the power of negative lambda times x, and this is where x is greater than or equal to zero. And recall we used the exponential distribution to calculate probabilities associated with the time between system failures. And we ended this past module by introducing this notion of MTBF or the average or mean time between failures, which is how we get this acronym MTBF. So since these times between failures are exponentially distributed, so recall we're, we're denoting these times between failures as our x sub i, so these times between these recorded failures. So I drew this graphic multiple times in the last module where we have our test time on the x-axis and the cumulative number of failures that we've counted using a Poisson process on the y-axis. So t sub 1, we've incremented up because we've counted one failure. At t sub 2, we count up. So we have two failures total. And our x sub i is to note the times between these failures occurring. And we want to know the probabilities associated with those. And we derive that the way we can assign probabilities to these times is through the exponential distribution. So since these times between failures are exponentially distributed, then the mean time between failures is just the expected value of the exponential distribution, which is 1 over lambda. So now understanding mean time between failure, the exponential distribution, Poisson processes, all of the above, let's try and understand the homogeneous Poisson process in the form of looking at a bathtub curve. So to visualize a repairable system's functionality over its lifetime, we, typ we typically represent it as a bathtub curve. So on the x-axis, we have a time period uh, for a system's life. And on the y-axis, we have some failure rate. So in the very, very early stages, we have a period of system improvement where we're finding and fixing failure modes. So the failure rate decreases with time because typically when you're correcting failures and fixing things, you'd expect the system to improve. So the failure rate is decreasing as time goes on. And then you reach this middle portion where you reach a useful life period where reliability is roughly constant. So the failure rate is not changing. It's this horizontal line. And the last piece of this curve characterizes a wear out period where failures are coming closer together as the system wears out. So the failure rate is increasing as time goes on. But Understanding this, let's actually just focus on the useful life period when we're talking about the homogeneous Poisson process case. So in this useful life section, we have a constant rate of failures. In other words, the expected time between failures is constant. And this uses one of the assumptions we covered in an earlier module, where the Poisson process has stationary increments. And recall that this just simply means that so long as we have the same length time intervals, then the distribution describing the expected number of failures is the same. And one statistical model for this is called the homogeneous Poisson process, or HPP. Homo in homogeneous is same or similar. So this points to the rate of failure being constant, which we have visualized here. So at any point in time during our test period, we can expect one over lambda time between failures. Now to maybe understand this a little bit more, let's look at three hypothetical systems. So notice here that the x-axis has time of failure 
And the y-axis has the cumulative number of failures as this time goes on. System two has a failure rate that is constant. And we can see this in the basically linear relationship between the number of failures and the time of failure on the x-axis. And this correlates to this useful life period here where we're seeing that as time goes on, the number of failures has some linear-ish slope. So the slope is constant here, whereas in system one and system three, we have a changing slope as time goes on, which is indicating that our failure rate is changing. Think of failure rate as some slope. So if we have a constant slope, we'll observe a linear relationship when we're looking at number of failures versus time. And for system one and system three, we're looking at a changing failure rate. So that's the extent necessary to cover the homogeneous case of the Poisson process-based models. Despite its simplicity, most systems or complex tools or equipment that we interact with day to day seem to be operating in this long, flat, constant repair rate portion of the bathtub curve. The HPP is a fairly, a fairly popular model that applies to that portion of the curve and is thus a popular model for system reliability evaluation and reliability test planning. However, in the purpose of performing reliability growth testing, where we have brand new systems, so in the very early stages of a system's life, we are often not working in this long, flat, constant failure rate portion of the bathtub curve. And this means that the HPP is not as useful for understanding the system. In the next module, we talk about how to generalize the HPP to a new model that can account for improvements in the system, which we call the non-homogeneous Poisson process. The next module goes into detail about changing rate of failure as we perform re repairs on our system.